welcome back to Greenland and we are in December and I have something a bit different planned for today. Yep, I've not got lost. I'm in Forestry Machines. I'm in the Platinum DLC because I want to use one of the new tree planting bits of kit. I'm not sure which one of the two Volvos it is. And you know that I've seen others looking at this uh, tree planter and I figured it would be something fun to do through the winter. Um, because I want to go plant the kind of tree line, hedge line down on the wild area. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to lease all of this stuff. The Risutech SKB240 because it holds 240 saplings, which is pretty nuts. And a Volvo EC250DL who's excited about that, hey? It's a lot of money, but it doesn't really matter. We are, as we progress through December, we're going to be making a fair bit of cash. Um, so I've brought the, the truck and the low loader over, and uh, we're going to see if we can get this thing loaded up. Um, we need some saplings as well. I've got to admit, driving this thing felt uh, like I had no clue what I was doing initially. It took a little bit to get used to. Um, I have not driven this sort of kit from the platinum dlc before and it's the first fs vehicle that i've driven that can do a neutral turn um which is really cool um so i'm hoping that that means more of my beloved two track tractors will get the ability to do neutral turns um if you don't know what one of those is you will see in a bit when i actually work it out actually it's quite a bit later when i work it out um basically you can turn without going forwards or backwards which with the two track tractors in FS you can't do. Now that may be actually how two track tractors work, but it'd be really nice to be able to do neutral turns in them. So just trying to familiarize myself with some of the controls. Um, yeah, obviously because it's a, uh, a DLC mode. It's a really nice looking bit of kit. Um, so it just takes me a little while to get all the controls sorted in my brain. Um, and I say what I hadn't realized at this point is that you could do a neutral turn. Um, and so having to get a little bit of forward momentum before we can turn, I found. Um, and yeah, generally just experimenting. So the Govil, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Um, pack was announced today, which will let you know which day I'm recording this, and uh, I'm kind of excited about it. Um, there's that big beastie uh bailout wrapper thing that you take your trailers full of uh chaff or whatever to to get round bales out the other end. Um, that looks really cool, and then the autonomous wrappers, which are not what I expected but are very cool because oh, the tree flickering is still there. I'm yeah just gonna have to get used to it i think at the moment i might end up sticking now we're in december i might just stick it on a fixed visual month um yeah lost my train of thought yeah the autonomous wrapper so when i read autonomous wrapper i thought so it's gonna drive around the field on its own wrapping bales maybe because i've seen you know the, you know you got the autonomous case tractor and all that kind of and the john deere one all that kind of thing and um uh we have a problem here the trailer is too small um th this could be an issue it's not really because there is a a trailer that comes with the platinum dlc which can go wider i had wondered whether this one has the option to extend um i was wondering whether i could just kind of wing it and get a bit of the track on each side but it didn't want to play that game so yeah just going to jump in the truck and see if there are any options for unfolding or extending the trailer which there are not um annoyingly so yeah when i eventually realize we're going to fold this one up get it parked up and we're going to lease the one from the dlc which i know can be expanded um so yeah we're going to use that um yeah so the autonomous baler it doesn't drive around the field wrapping bales for you um what it is is it has its own engine so you can drop it in the field, fire that up, and then drive around picking the bales up, drop them in the bale wrapper, 
and it will wrap them while you go off and do other things. So it means you essentially need one less machine um, to do that job, um, assuming that you had planned to take bales to the bale wrapper. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see that one. I think that is going to be very cool. So yeah, this is the beastie we want. Um, I say we're spending a fair bit of cash to do this. It's, uh, and it's kind of a random thing that I don't really need to do. But I got it in my head to do it, so we're going to do it. That's how this works. I'm in charge, sort of, maybe. Um, hey, let's hook this up to the truck and uh, get this thing down to the field. There, There is a, a version of me that would have just driven that thing ever so slowly around the map um, to the field. But that's not the version of me that was playing this. Um, ultimately, it may have been quicker by the time I've released another trailer. But after about working out the controls, it does take me a bit of faffing to work out the controls. So you can extend this trailer as well, as you've seen me do. You can move the ramps and you can make it wider. And at the moment, I'm doing everything but making it wider. No. Well, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm really looking forward to that pack. It's, uh, I think it's March 21st. If you're interested in it, use code disturbed. Um, it doesn't cost you any more. Um, I get a tiny, tiny percentage. Uh, and what I'm really interested in is eventually making it to Bronze Partner so that I can get early access to this stuff so I can show it off to you lot. Um, Obviously, I think people are much more excited about this one than some of the recent ones, judging by the number of views that the video that I released and not even 45 minutes ago has got. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. Um, I, I mean, it's another week where I'm away in hotels. Um, I was chatting about it on Discord earlier. I had got myself in a really good position with recording videos, um, but... We, there might there might be a little gap this week there might be a little gap um it's only tuesday um i have got quite a few videos ready to go but um i'm feeling tired tonight i don't know why i'm feeling tired i did a 10 mile run after work um that would make you feel tired but I, it means i'm not going to get the recording done that i planned to do tonight i planned to knock out um this commentary plus two more videos um, and that's not going to happen because i'm going to do this commentary i'm going to edit this video and then i'm going to stick some netflix or a film on and crash for the evening so yes crash i know haha -ha, i'm good at that aren't i um something that i'm trying to work on is prioritizing sleep i've got really bad at that lately um particularly with um and i've sure spoken about it a lot one of the greyhounds at the moment has this real thing that if i'm at home he wants to be up at about four in the morning four half past four in the morning um if i'm not home he doesn't do it he's very he's very has very specific habits with very specific people so with the teenager um he likes her to sit with him and hold his paws she doesn't want he doesn't want her to stroke him she just wants her to sit and hold his paws um with me he just likes me being there um so if he knows i'm in a different room he doesn't like it if he knows i'm upstairs trying to sleep he doesn't like it so um and some ways i, I you know i kind of like that a couple of hours in the morning to myself before work um and it's quite good with the training that i'm doing at the moment to be up earlier so i can get out earlier so i can do more before work but also i need my sleep so i have been trying to be better at um if he wakes me up i will uh go downstairs let them out to do whatever they need to do and then quite often i'll try and go get back to sleep again in the armchair i know it's not ideal um I really, I, I find I can't go back upstairs to bed and go to sleep. My brain wakes up too much. Um, but if I uh, go up, sit in the armchair, I've got a reclining armchair, stick some background noise on YouTube, whether that be, um, you know, like some of the, um, the kind of white noise stuff that I 
spoken about before or um, I find you know old book, you know, like Sherlock Holmes books and that kind of thing I quite find, find those they uh, so we're just getting started with laying our line of trees along here um, so basically you press X every time you want to plant a tree um, you can plant them quite close together so it will be interesting to see how they grow in over time and the sound effects are quite cool as well I uh, was playing without the sound on obviously as I do and so it's quite cool hearing the sound effects um, yeah so I, I find stories like the Sherlock Holmes books um, if you search for sleep stories on YouTube there's quite a lot of you know and they're, they're just quite calm there's not too much going on to engage your brain but I find it's enough to disengage the other bits of my brain um, and so yeah I'm trying to balance prioritizing sleep training for this freaking ultra marathon um, and work and family and all that stuff I'm not complaining I'm just explaining why there might be a gap in the videos this week I'm hoping there won't be um, so this video will be going out on Thursday it's only Tuesday I need to do the video for the patron still that's one of the ones I was going to record tonight um, I quite like recording those when I'm away because I can just kind of sit in the hotel room chill out and play some farms I'm feeling a bit too tired tonight so uh, yeah patrons your video might be a bit late I'm gonna say thank you to you guys now because you are awesome and the YouTube channel members appreciate you all supporting the channel um, but yeah that video might be a bit late it might not be I might get it recorded tomorrow or Thursday morning before I start work um, so the other thing that's a bit weird at the moment is it's half term here um, so that means that the teenager doesn't have to get up to go to college Mrs D doesn't have to get up to make sure she gets out to college and at the moment Mrs D drives her to college it's quite a long way um, and it's really expensive to get the bus here so uh, yeah but what that means is mm, when I would quite often record before work and uh, the, the rest of the house are in bed asleep still and so it's kind of doesn't really work with me uh, sitting talking away to myself in the room next door uh, so school holidays I always find quite tricky with recording so and particularly with traveling and work and stuff so yeah that, that video might come out on Friday um, we'll see just playing with some of the different views that you get with this because obviously you can use it as a tree cutter and a digger and all sorts of things um we're just using one function and i am just you know hammering these trees in as much as possible because what so the idea of this and it may not have grown in fully before we finish is this will create a nice natural barrier to the farming that we're doing the other side and it means we can strip the trees out of all the area that we're mowing but we're not using as arable land so that we can make it easier to mow that's the theory um we'll see how that goes i'm still pondering still thinking um and i actually i do have a look at it at the end i'm not still not sure about buying more of the wildland area and turning it into fields um i don't i don't know what to do on that I did ask before and some feedback was yes some feedback was no um, what I can't decide in my head is whether I just push the mega field even longer so it gets even bigger or whether we just may make another field in there another big field and plant something different um, and it's just kind of interesting to do some the different types of farming that having a huge field creates um, so yeah i don't know I've, I've, I've got time to ponder probably not going to look at doing anything in game until about february so yeah um, i found it quite interesting how the pedals with this move with the hand levers as well i guess you can drive it with either um my experience of driving a, a mini digger uh, so much smaller than this obviously um was that it only had the hand levers for controlling the tracks yes i have driven a mini digger no i did not crash it um i spent a summer i don't know if i've spoken about this when i was at university i spent a summer working for a local building firm and uh one of the things that i had to do as part of i mean play with i got to play with no it was work did not play um was using a mini digger to uh move some some stuff about um yes yeah, so i was just i was just doing kind of general laboring as 
the uh, helping build an extension on a big farmhouse. Um, not well, not farmhouse. Sorry, house out in the countryside. It wasn't a farmhouse. Um, they butted up to some farmland and stuff, and uh, they they were having the ha house. I think it was at least another fifty percent in size they were putting on it, and uh, so we had a mini digger there because the uh, it was the house was bordered on fields, and running between them was a a boundary of trees and they were quite old trees and they weren't allowed to take them out to build the extension um so what we had to do was not tip the truck over um i forgot to un undo the straps um what we had to do was dig the foundations for this extension which ran along the edge of the tree line without knocking the tree without taking the trees out and as we took one of the fence and i'm just unloading these saplings here um, as we took one of the fence posts out a tree fell over and took another one with it um basically the fence was holding this old tree up and so we had to get environmental people out and stuff and they were like yeah it's fine because the tree was clearly unsafe um, so loading the wall up now we're going to take that down to the spinnery um, but that meant we had these two huge freaking trees that were laying in i think they was i think it was a certainly wasn't land that the house owned um not sure if it was farmland or not I'm struggling to remember that bit um so i was given a chainsaw to chop them up into manageable sized pieces and then we loaded some i think we we stacked some of it for them for firewood um and then some of it we had to get this mini digger in it to move to load up and uh to clear up some of the rubbish from it and yeah it was the, the someone who actually knew what they were doing did the work um and then we had a quiet period um we were waiting for something to be delivered or whatever and the guys were working so yeah, go and have a go and have a, a, a play if you want and uh play's maybe not the right word um but yeah so basically i moved a part of dirt from point a to point b and it was quite good fun um so yeah yeah that's a really random story that i'd kind of half forgotten and I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on here. So if I have, I hope you enjoyed it again. If not, there you go. There's a little insight into my past. I'm pretty sure I've spoken about working for a building firm before when I was on holiday whilst at uni. So, God, I've done a bad job of loading that trailer up. But I should have unloaded it and reloaded it. But anyway, I can't get the last pallet on. So we're going to get the, uh, the fastening over and chuck it in the bed of the pickup truck because it's just bags of wool on the pallet, so it'll be fine. Um, hmm, hopefully that didn't come through. I just need the microphone out under the desk. Oh, well. Um, and it, it, recording in hotels is always, always an interesting challenge for a couple of reasons. One, I only have the laptop screen, so I have to try and cram the three things that I like to have on the screen when I'm recording all on one 17 inch screen. I never know how I'm going to be able to connect up microphone stands and stuff. So yeah, this one, it has a desk that is quite thick, but not too thick. And it actually been pulled away from the wall, which is quite unusual. So I could get the microphone mount behind the desk. Um, but I just need it because I'm, uh, I'm kind of laid back in the chair and yeah anywho up at the uh custom spinnery production um i think that's what it's called still need to do the landscaping around here but we're going to get all this wall unloaded and uh, then we have a heck of a lot of pallets of clothes that we need to get stacked i think um so if we look in the production now right at the bottom you'll see that we have a lot of wool uh 16,000 liters of wool and about 17,000 liters of clothes it's an insane amount of money um if we check the price of i think clothes are back back further up back up the other way uh, i'm looking for when the best price for clothes is i do have the time saving stock check and the sell price trigger in um, but we're looking at M April, May time, and I think it's about 18 grand for clothes per thousand litres. There's a lot of money sitting there waiting, um, which is kind of nice. So um, I'm just going to let those 
stockpile until we get to the point where we get the best price for them because there's no real need to rush to sell them um what i'm going to do is grab the the jcb tele truck maybe do getting a forklift over here as well um do like a forklift after playing with it on Attingham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to grab the JCB Tele truck and we're going to take that back over to the production area. Move the pallets of clothes so the rest can spawn because it's getting quite full. Um, and I don't want that production to stop because it's full. So, yeah. Um, random. Ran another random thing that's cropped into my head. On a Sunday, we've been watching, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I don't even know what channel it's on. Um, Mrs. D found it. It's a program about a haulage firm that do um, they do heavy haulage, and it's about them hauling trains around the UK. Um, the bit that I remembered is they loading one train up. They used a JCB tele truck to pull it on to the trailer, um, which I thought was really cool. I was, I was watching. I was like, "Wait a minute! I recognise that." Um, it's actually bigger in real life than I think, unless they do a slightly bigger version. Um, I don't know, they do a whole load of different models of things. Um, there's a, a plant hire place that I run past on quite a lot of my runs. And they have a lot of JCB telehandlers and other bits of kit. And I think they have some of those, some some of the bigger versions of this in as well. Um, and maybe it was a bigger version of this actually than the tele truck. It certainly looked bigger, but I know Farmsim does vehicle scales a little bit strangely sometimes. So yeah, and I don't know why I think I need a forklift. This thing works just as well as a forklift. Um, it's a brilliant little bit of kit. And what it's quite sad that I've owned it for so long and uh, we've only put 0.7 hours on it because it's a little, spent its whole life down here um, I originally bought it to keep it up at the store um, and we weren't really using it up there so I brought it down here to the production area and again it's not really getting a lot of use at the moment I think that's going to change with the eggs um, because I'm trying to keep the spawn area clear in the chicken sheds we do have quite a few parts of eggs that we're going to get to selling as well in fact i think that's the next thing we're going to tackle is uh getting a bunch of the eggs sold um you can see we're sitting on quite a lot of cash at the moment um and that's predominantly at this point i think i think i might have sold some milk and I think the BGA, I'll, I'll go through the uh, the finance summary a couple of times because I ended up doing a bit more than I thought um, recording this video. But we are going to be able to pay off quite a bit on the loan, which is quite nice. Um, having, you know, and there's something I said in the last video, we spent a lot of money on, you know, getting the production in, getting the chicken set up. Um, and we spent, what? Three hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds on chickens, um, which is just stupid. Um, so the uh, the plan is to start earning some of that back. Um, but you know, a lot of money is obviously coming from milk and the BGAs that we've got running. Um, I did bring, I think, yeah, I think I brought down um, all the manure from the farm again because we had another couple hundred thousand liters of manure. I keep kneeing that damn microphone mount. Um, so that's that I brought that down and put that through the industrial BGA which is behind us and that meant I could take a trailer load of maize silage back as well it works quite well um, so I, I bring a trailer full of manure down to the BGA and then load up with maize silage to take it back up to the main farm um, and yeah we're just trying to auto load on the pallets it might have been easier again I'm gonna say forklift but bringing the tele truck back over um, might have helped for getting the pallets out of the shed and loading them on it might have just been a bit neater um, but it's quite a lot of pallets already stacked up I'm convinced and I have no evidence for it no logical reason it really feels like the first shed the chickens are producing more eggs that makes zero sense um, it just feels like it I don't know why um, so fully loaded with um, 
12 pallets of eggs it's really weird because it looks like we should be able to fit more on now because they were all disorganized but it just it takes 12 pallets um so this is using this is not using universal auto load universal auto load might have put more on don't know um but we're gonna just faff about for a little bit longer and then we'll take these over to sell them um if i was paying attention i would have seen at the bottom of the f1 menu that it says it's got 12 of 12 pallets loaded and what i'm doing here is all completely pointless so chop shop disturbed get your ass moving there we go um i could probably load more up if i put a bed on the back of the uh the pickup as well but yeah, it's really handy for feeding the chickens having that trailer bed so first load of eggs going what are we going to get for it um, I'm not sure if we're at best price or not. Yeah, I just wanted to sell them to get them away. I think we were at a good price, maybe not the best price. Um, and so that's 30, so about 42,000 pounds per load. Um, so that's pretty nice, you know. Yes, we spent an insane amount of money, but we should make that back. So, you know, 80 odd thousand for the first few days worth of egg production is pretty nice. Um, and that's almost a million pounds in the bank, which is very nice. So I think at this point we're going to have a quick look at the finances. Um, yep, so you can see we've had a bunch of costs, nothing too major. And then £265,000 worth of milk. The 76000 I think was fertilizer or lime. Um, I think it was lime. 213 is fertilizer and 318 from the BGA and we can pay a bunch of money off the loan which is really nice I think I take it down to 700,000 um, at this point so lots of clicking but progress excuse me geez hopefully I muted that out um, yeah as I said really quite tired so had quite a big day at work today closed out some really important things so yeah i think that's kind of hit me now um and feeling kind of exhausted so and yeah hundred and ten thousand liters of fertilizer coming up to the sell point as well this is going to be an immense payday so we've got basically five hundred and seventy five thousand pounds in the bank watch the numbers spin this fertilizer production has been a real boost for this farm yep it's just going and going and going and three eight three hundred and fifty thousand pounds selling the fertilizer so pretty comfortable that we can pay another chunk off the loan at this point um yeah so i, I think i take it down to six million at this point so, you know, over the course of this month, we've paid off uh, 101.7 million, something like that. By the time I get around to it, so you can see the uh, the BGA income and the harvest income have both gone up from us selling stuff. Um, I know what I was pointing out there. So, yeah, let's get some more of the loan paid off. And I'm going to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Next month, we will try and push through January, maybe into February. Um comments questions or suggestions below and if you've watched 29 minutes of me playing farm sim and you enjoyed it and you aren't subscribed which still a lot of people aren't then think about subscribing turn on notifications um if you really really enjoyed it think about patron or joining the youtube channel members um and yeah just gonna have a quick look at these chunks of land so we're looking at between about 180 and I think 200,000 to buy one of these. So obviously it would make sense to buy 109, but yeah. Anyway, I will see you next time on Greenlands.